Cool. So, a personal tip before we go on, never trust yourself. Disclaimer, this only applies if you're a stupid Swede named Robin Wellstrom who thinks too much of himself. So this is a conversation that I had with uh, Rachel, the one I'm trekking with, before we were supposed to go to base camp. It can't be that cold. Will a mid-layer plus windbreaker do? The answer is no. I don't think I'll need a sleeping bag. You do. Altitude sickness won't bother me. It uh, did. The EBC is harder than you think. Uh, and I'm stupid. And that will be a plane. How do I always find these spots? That's a chicken. That's the wind. Space camp trick, 2017, 1st of February. <laughs> Hello, my name is Robin, I'm an average climber, and today we're going to talk about the Everest Space Camp experience from a vegan diabetic Swede on a budget perspective. So on the 1st of January, I left Stockholm, Sweden, to India and the bouldering paradise of Hampi. On the 30th, I cancelled my plans to Thailand to go to Nepal to do the Everest Space Camp trip instead. So the EBC is the trek you do before going up Everest. It's in the Himalayan mountain chain in Nepal. It's a very popular and classic trek with absolutely stunning views of uh, the Himalayan mountain chain. The trek takes about 10 to 15 days. It's 130 kilometers long and it has you climbing to a 5,200 meter altitude. And you don't need to bring either tents or food. You basically just go from village to village where they have housing and food available. And you need to bring warm clothes. Don't try to go hardcore if you, you know you aren't. I'm glad I didn't. And before we go on, I will talk a lot about AMS. The first thing that you'll experience is breathlessness. Basically, you gra grasp, basically, you grasp for, what, what the fuck? Basically, you grasp, gasp for breath, uh, like you've forgotten how to breathe. Like, and this itself can cause panic, especially if you're sleeping in a bed and you wake up to it. I personally found myself questioning if I were to die if I didn't like consciously focus on my breath while, uh, while sleeping. Other symptoms to look out for is uh, nausea, headaches, loss of appetite, dizziness, rapid pulse, and also vomiting. I had all except vomiting, um, more or less after 4,000 meters. So to go through it all, you start by coming to Kathmandu. And if you don't have gear prior, this is the place to get it. It's crazy cheap and you'll easily find everything and more. So in Kathmandu, you just find a travel agency, which will take care of the flight tickets and Tim's cards, uh, which is like visa-like thingies that you need to get onto the trail. And once all of that's sorted, you go to the Kathmandu airport very early in the morning to catch the first flight to uh, Lukla, where the trail started. We're going to... Lukla! Um, and then we're going to Mount Everest. It's four in the morning. <laughs> but the flights are never on time, so expect to be there for a while. And we're live! We, we haven't moved an inch. Um, we've moved a few inches. We've moved a few inches. We haven't flown yet. We haven't flown? What? We're still on the plane station. It's 8.30, it's been like three hours, three and a half. It's and there's, they're starting to cancel flights. Look at my beard! <laughs> And by the way, these flights are supposed to be one of the most dangerous or the most dangerous flight in the world because of the short runway at the Lukla airport. So the adventure really starts even before you take your first step on the trail. Once you arrive in Lukla and you got all your gear sorted, you start trekking. We went from Lukla to Pak Ding on our first day. It's a really good intro to the trek. And the next day you go to Manjo where you pay the entrance fee to the park. And then you're gonna continue to Namche Basar, which ends with a crazy climb upwards. For me personally, I think this was the worst day physically. Because the climb is like one to two hours and it's straight up. And you start feeling the altitude sickness. It's 800 meters from the past village that you started from. And this is a perfect place to have your first rest. 
and you will need these rests for acclimatization purposes. Uh, AMS is very real and it's something you don't want to play around with. And we actually had to help the guy to get rescued on the way down. We earned uh, $20 doing it, or else we wouldn't have done it. And after you've rested in the Namche, you head over to Tengboche, and which also ends with a kind of a never-ending climb. Anyway, Tengboche is on like this beautiful peak among uh, the mountains, so stay here and enjoy the view. It's amazing! <laughs> <laughs> After Tingboche, you can go to either Periche or Dingboche. I recommend you to go to Dingboche on the way up and then Periche on the way down. What is that? And Dingboche is a really nice village that will be the second place for a rest. So you're now on a 4,300 meter altitude, and this is where things really start to, start to get sketchy with your mind. I was wrecked at this point. I've totally hit like a low point on the trek. The last two days I haven't slept so well at all and this night I didn't sleep at all. I'm really feeling the altitude. It's harder to breathe and but right now it, I'm just super tired. Everything around me is just dizzy and fussy and so yeah, it's definitely a low point. Um, pray for my survival <laughs> or, or whatever. Cool. But after a day's rest without sleep, if that's even possible, we headed off to Lobche. First bit of this path is in like a deserty environment that doesn't ever seem to end. But after a while along this strip, which is a very beautiful strip by the way, you get to a place called Dugla. And this is where you should just rest a bit and have lunch. Because uh, after that you'll end up going on another 300 meter climb and you're now just under 5,000 meters of altitude. The next day we decided to make an effort to go all the way to base camp directly and then sleep in Gorak for only one night. And that's mainly because I was feeling shit and I didn't want to spend two nights on high altitude. This uh, plan is quite normal though, so it's not like the most hardcore thing to do. Uh, we're not hardcore mega freaks. Anyway, we left uh, Lobche to Gorak, which is like a four kilometers quite okay trek. Uh, quite easy trek, it's only 200 meters up, and this is just to leave our gear at the, at the Gora guest house. <laughs> I look like fucking Santa Claus. <laughs> so a few days later, we made it to Gorak, which is basically two hours from base camp. I don't know what she's doing. We're at 16,000 feet. We've been climbing ever since I uh, interviewed myself last, being really sick. And it's been kind of fine. I still haven't slept, but... <laughs> <laughs> We're going up to base camp today. She's just gonna relax for a while, and then I'm gonna relax too. <laughs> I, d I don't function. I can't walk, that's it. And I can film. Oh, look at this. Outside our window. That might be... Uh, it's probably not Everest. It is. That is Everest. <laughs> Chilling outside our window. But yeah, wish us good luck. Bye bye. So just after lunch, we continued to the Everest base camp. And I actually felt okay at first. But as we progressed, I quickly started to lose track of things. It's among super windy mountain passes, which gets you to almost a 5,400 meter altitude. It's cold, with snow and ice, and it's kind of the sketchy moving rock path with uh, crevasses to your left and right. I remember when we actually got there telling Rachel something in the style of, I am here, it's probably great, but I'm feeling like shit. I'm just gonna film this so we can go home. Funny, happy guy right there, compared to Rachel, who then was like this super rock star hiker who just ran across the hilltops and I was like <laughs> in the in the background like and we stayed for around 30 minutes in base camp and that was it uh, 
uh, the way back is a lot easier. Uh, it's mostly downwards. So we made that in three days. And I'll tell you, after the 60 kilometers on the way down, uh, it was so great to just come back and have like this warm shower. And as a vegan on the trail, life was actually pretty simple. Uh, they even have like vegan restaurants here in Kathmandu, so that locals actually know what it is. It can't vary too much, uh, even as a non-vegan on the lodges. It's mostly rice and noodles. Grab some energy bars, some nuts and some peanut butter along the way and that will add up to the 90% carb filled meals that they kind of give you. And I have to tell you that my diabetes screwed with me a ton when I got up on higher altitudes. First off, my blood sugar monitor failed me. I guess the batteries broke because of the cold. Fuck my life. Fuck this wind. I'm just gonna sit here instead. And to keep the temps right, I kept my shots close to the body at night when it got cold and in the backpack while I was drinking. So, fellow diabetic friends, just do it. And remember when you get to higher altitudes and sketch your paths that don't stress being too high on blood, blood sugar because um, you don't want to faint into one of the crevasses. <laughs> And we were trekking on a budget and we ended up around 500 euros each for everything. And they rarely charge you for the rooms themselves, as long as you have all the food on the lot that you're staying in. And when it comes to using your phone, there is almost always a cellular thing. Uh, but as far as Wi-Fi goes, uh, after Namche there's, there's none, at least when we trade. Normally, however, they sell these Wi-Fi cards, which works all the way up to base camp. However, if you're trekking on a path like this, you wouldn't need Wi-Fi. Seriously, just look out the window in your lodge. Shut off your fucking phone and enjoy. Don't be a pussy. Or a dick. Don't be a pussy dick. So, is it hard? I'd say it's more of a mental thing. If you really want to do it, I think you, just, you will. I'm uh, looking through the footage now after, after a day, I now really realize what an adventure it has been. You get so overwhelmed by everything, so you just kind of flow into the experience while you're tricking. The sickness and the pain of the body and, and all the memorial places of everyone who's actually died along this path and on Everest itself, but also the crazy views and the fact that you're on your way to the bottom of the tallest mountain on the earth. Congress of the useless. That might be a thing. Bam. Bam. However, uh, next up is Thailand to meet this guy. <laughs> and this guy. Tell me I suck. Tell me I fail. Like a weird. <laughs> Never amount to anything. <laughs> and I'll try to find some bouldering spaces. Bouldering spaces? Bouldering spots. Bouldering places. Where and get some more climbing vids going too. I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm serious. I've, I've been climbing whatever I can find along the way. Ready? Yep. It's gonna be great. So stay tuned. Windows.